Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is January the 18th and today we're reading in Genesis chapter 45 where we have the incident of Joseph's cup which puts the fear of the Lord into the brothers. Joseph reveals himself eventually to his brothers in one of the most touching passages of scripture and in the end Joseph manages to arrange for the brothers bring their father and all the family to Egypt. This of course is only two years into the famine. There's still another five more years to go. This time Joseph arranges for a silver cup belonging to himself to be hidden in the sack of corn belonging to Benjamin. The money also was put back into the sacks. As soon as they set off he sends his servants to intercept the men and to bring Benjamin back. Joseph declares that the man who has his cup will be his servant. Judah is distraught by the events. He pleads on behalf of Benjamin. We cannot help but think that Judah had in his mind his own children who had stood as surety uh, for Benjamin's life. And he explains the trauma that will come on Jacob if Benjamin does not return. At this point, Joseph could not contain himself anymore and he demanded that every Gentile be put out of the room while he spoke to his brethren. And Joseph revealed himself to his brothers alone. He wept aloud and the Egyptians and Pharaoh heard about it. Then Joseph said simply, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? You see, Joseph is not sure whether they're lying to him at all. <clears throat> His brothers were deeply troubled at what he said. They were in shock. Wow. They were, they were in shock. They never thought that they would ever see the brother again. Israel will be in so much shock in a coming day when Christ reveals himself again to his brethren. They never thought when they demanded his crucifixion that they'd ever see him again. Joseph called his brothers to draw near and they crept forward to peer into his face. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, who sold you into Egypt do not be grieved or angry with yourselves because it was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve life. We have only had two years of famine. There are, there are five more years to go. Um, <clears throat> wow, five more years of famine. Can't quite believe a famine that would affect the whole world like that. And Joseph, like Christ, was revealed to his brethren during, sorry, Joseph, like Christ, will be revealed to his brethren during a seven year period, the period that we called, that we called the tribulation. And God sent me here to preserve you, he said, and with Christ, they thought they were crucifying him in rejection, but in his rejection, he was providing salvation for Israel. Joseph said, God has sent me here to be a father to Pharaoh. Now that's an amazing thing, a father to Pharaoh. The word Pharaoh means father. He says, I'm here to be the father to Pharaoh, Lord of all his house and ruler of all the land of Egypt. <clears throat> Go and tell my father that God has made me Lord of all Egypt. When Christ is revealed to his ancient people, he will become Lord of all the earth. He said, I will put you in the land of Goshen and I will look after you all there. Joseph fell on the neck of Benjamin, um, his true brother, and wept. Of course, the others were half brothers. He kissed all his brothers with a kiss of true love and wept for each one of them. When it was discovered what had happened, Pharaoh was very pleased. And all the servants of Egypt, imagine that. 
he provided wagons of food. But to Benjamin he gave three hundred silver coins and five changes of clothes. For Jacob he sent ten jacks, that's male donkeys, laden with the good things of Egypt, and ten jennies, female donkeys, and they were laden with food. And they went home and told that Joseph was alive and after all and that he was governor of the whole of Egypt Jacob <coughs> could hardly believe it but when he saw all the donkeys and the goods he revived in spirit and then he said enough I will go and I will see him before I die and Jacob went to Egypt uh, let me just make a note of that Jake, J J Jacob um, went to Egypt in about 1701 BC and lived another um, 17 years in Egypt and he died there aged 147 when Joseph was 56 and Benjamin was 39 what an amazing, an amazing story. Now the first part is all about how Joseph had to try <laughs> and persuade these brothers to bring his father to, um, to Egypt. But in the midst of it all, <clears throat> Joseph himself broke down. He just couldn't refrain himself anymore. And he said to all of the Gentiles, get out of the place, get out of the place. And they all fled. And then it says in verse 2, there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. No Gentile stood there. And notice what it says next. It says, and he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it and Joseph stood there and said I am Joseph is my father still alive his brethren couldn't answer him they were troubled at his presence no wonder Joseph said come near to me come on come near to you I pray you they came near and he said look at me I'm Joseph your brother who you sold into Egypt but don't be grieved or angry with yourselves he says you sold me hither yes but God sent me here to preserve your life he said we've had two years of famine but there's still five more to come and God has sent me before you to preserve for you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives Imagine that by a great deliverance. So now it's not you that sent me, but God who sent me. And he has made me Lord. He's made me father of Pharaoh, Lord of all his house, ruler of all the land of Egypt. He said, right, I want you. <laughs> he says, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Now come down with me, tarry not, and you will dwell in the land of Goshen. You shall be near unto me you and your children and your grandchildren and your flocks and your herds everything that you have and I will nourish you there for there's still five more years lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty and behold your eyes see it and the eyes of my of my brother Benjamin that is in my mouth that speaketh unto you and you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt of all that you have seen and you shall make haste and bring my father hither and they fell and then he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept and Benjamin wept upon his neck however he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them and after that his brethren talked with him and the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house saying Joseph's brethren have come a 
and it pleased Pharaoh well and his servants and then Pharaoh said I want you to go into the land of Canaan I want you to get your father and I want you to have wagons and I want you to have all the goods and uh, amazing 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 story Uh, verse 26 and they told him saying Joseph is yet alive and he is governor over all the land of Egypt and Jacob's heart fainted for he believed them not couldn't believe it and they told him all the words of Joseph which he had said unto them and when Jacob saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him the spirit of Jacob his father revived and Israel said it is enough Joseph my son is yet alive I will go and see him before I die what Jacob didn't know is that he was going to live another 17 years he lived 17 years with Joseph in Egypt what glorious years they were when Joseph went to Egypt he was 17 and when Jacob went to Egypt he had 17 more years with his father what an incredible incredible story this is it's a story that's full of emotion when the Lord Jesus comes in glory and he stands in front of his brethren there will be no Gentiles present it's going to be a family reunion and he's going to say it's me look at the wounds look at the wound marks of Calvary look at the wounds in which in which you um, in which you crucified me and they will weep they will weep as for an only child and he'll say don't worry God has sent me ahead of you to save you remember what the angel said to Joseph his name shall be Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins what sin is that he'll save them from the sin of rejection those that rejected him he'll forgive them and he'll restore them to himself and that's what the Lord Jesus prayed on the cross he says father forgive them they know not what they do they don't realize what they're doing forgive them he says and the Lord Jesus will finally be united with his brethren for all eternity and so is the book of Genesis is it history yeah yes it certainly is history but it's also prophecy it's a prophecy of the life of Christ Jacob Joseph is a picture of the life of Christ in in his rejection and in his glory well there we are what an amazing amazing uh, account this is I look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow have a wonderful day God bless you bye for now